What is a film score and how do you compose music for one? Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Stephen Malin, and I'm a number one Amazon best-selling author and music composer for the screen, helping you to grow a music business of your dreams. Today, we're answering the questions, what is a film score and how do I compose music for one? So let's start with what is a film score? Well, according to Wikipedia, a film score, also sometimes called background score, background music, film soundtrack, film music, or incidental music, is original music written specifically to accompany a film for the actors. It goes on to talk about the different types of instruments you might use, such as orchestral, instrumental, or choral pieces, and how they're divided into little chunks called cues, which is where timing begins and ends at specific points during the film in order to enhance the dramatic narrative and the emotional impact of the scene. And then it even goes on to talk about there's an enormous variety of styles of music depending on the nature of the films they accompany. These could be things like jazz, rock, pop, blues, new age, ambient music. But in modern film scores, specifically in 2019, we see a whole lot of hybrid scores, which means that we're combining orchestral live instrument elements with electronic, a lot of synthesizers. And really right about the time of Hans Zimmer type music in the early 2000s is when we really started to see this blend of two different styles. But what's really interesting is we read this definition and it, it doesn't even really have a specific answer. And, and so my conclusion is, well, a film score can really be anything. It can be any custom music or soundscape played at various times throughout a film. And it's not hard to notice this crazy contrast if we study classical film composers like John Williams and his scores to Star Wars, Jurassic Park, E.T. And we take a look at iconic melodies and the fanfares that he uses, which are very hummable and singable. Compare that to, say, Stephen Price and his incredibly ambient and moody electronic score to gravity. And there's everything in between, of course. And what's interesting is that all of them are valid. And another interesting layer is that it doesn't really matter who you are. Every composer brings their own unique sonic fingerprint, their own musical artistry and identity to the picture. So theoretically, you could have a hundred different versions of the same scene scored in different contexts. And depending on the particular flavor that that composer brings to the table, you're gonna have a very different experience, a very different emotional context, which is why filmmakers hire composers in the first place. So let's talk about the average film score links and how things are actually divided systematically. So a Q, C U E Q, is the smallest measurement of music within a film. A cue is typically between 10 seconds all the way up to, on average, maybe five minutes. But there are a lot of instances, such as lengthy action sequences where a lot's going on, where it could go all the way to 15, 20 minutes long. So really, it could be any amount of length. But the whole purpose is a cue represents one emotional state, one perspective. It might be one character's theme for that entire section. And what could happen in the film is you could actually have multiple scenes happen, different environments, different actions, but it might need that glue of one emotional state or one character theme that lasts throughout the entire experience of that moment. Or sometimes in a dialogue scene, you might only want a 10 second representation of a theme or a character or an environment. And that way it just gives us a small hint of something. It might be a foreshadowing of something that's coming later in the film. One film in particular, one series that comes to mind is the Lord of the Rings series composed by Howard Shore. In that movie series, we have a ton of themes that are associated with different characters and items, specifically the ring itself. It has a very particular ring theme. And so what's interesting is at different points throughout the movies, that one little ring theme might come in. Ba -da 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 
and that's it. It might just be one little statement. And then boom, we change to a different cue. But that one little cue would still have its own sheet music. It would have its own DAW session. It would have its own live recording. So the average film score length varies wildly, usually all the way from 10 minutes to 15 minutes in a short film, which is traditionally maybe 20 minutes long, all the way to feature films, which are traditionally 90 to 120 minutes in the actual picture length, you might have 50 to 75 minutes of music in there. And it just, it, it varies so wildly because it just depends on the needs of that particular filmmaker and what their artistry style is. Historically, there are directors like Martin Scorsese who believes that the story itself should be so strong that music doesn't get a place. And so he rarely uses music in his movies at all. But then you look at Steven Spielberg, who often hires John Williams for his pictures, and he puts a ton of music in the movies. Almost 90% or so of the movie is just smothered in that emotional context. So it doesn't make one or the other better. It just is a different style of creating a story because often when you put music into a scene, it makes it go by faster. It allows you to really uh, feel the emotion of that moment. When you take music away from the scene, it actually feels a little bit stark, a little cold, a little unfamiliar. So that's why horror movies often don't use a lot of music until there's a big climactic moment. And then we compare that to say a movie trailer, which is traditionally one to five minutes in length. That's going to be 100% music because it's, it's an advertisement. It's an experience that we're trying to really quickly get the audience involved and interested in what's going on. And so we would call that wall to wall music. Timeframes for film music composers are historically notorious for being insanely short to write the score. So the average feature film gives composers only six to eight weeks. The average short film gives composers only two to three weeks. And the average movie trailer gives composers only one to two days. This is a crazy contrast when compared to video games where composers have usually a year up to two or three years to create a soundtrack. So it's just a very different world. It's a very fast paced world. The reason behind this is in film, we have pre-production phase, production phase, and the post-production phase. The post-production is when the color is being corrected within the video. The video is being edited. Everything's together into what's called a locked picture. So everything with the editing is already cut into place and you as the music composer are the final step before the release of the film so it's really that last cherry on top there's really not going to be many more edits at that point and so once you're on you only have that short six to eight week time frame in the case of a feature and that's why it's so short and you have a lot to do in that small amount of time to make sure that the film is ready to go for the release. So how then do you actually write a film score? Well, I'm gonna run through this quickly, but here is the basis. You first need to have the correct gear. Thankfully, there's not a lot that you need. You have to have music software called a DAW or digital audio workstation, such as Cubase, Digital Performer, Logic Pro, Ableton Live, or Pro Tools, any DAW that has film scoring features. There are a lot that don't, so make sure that you have that video import option. That way you can have the picture in front of you while you actually write the music to it and time things up appropriately. The second step is to meet with the film team in a spotting session. This is where you discuss music cues and basically when music should enter and exit each scene and what kinds of music, what styles, what genres, what instruments, all of the details behind what would actually go into that cue of music. Then once you get back into your studio, you need to divide that video from the film team into separate scenes. That way you can import those individually as different sessions into your DAW, and then you can actually start scoring it. But in the case of those of you who use Digital Performer as your DAW, 
you can actually use the chunks feature. That's what I choose to do because that allows you to import one full length film into the session, just one session, and then it auto divides it into all of the different scenes, all sharing the same resources, the same instruments, the same effects. That way, within literally one sitting, you now have access to every one of your scenes. And if the film team does ask you to make some edits, you're not having to make these monumental changes that take a lot of time because ultimately you want to be quick when you're writing for film. So once you've done that, you've imported it into your session. You're then going to add the orchestral and electronic instruments that you want to use for that film. I suggest using a film scoring template, which is a template that you can create for yourself in advance using your own instruments, or you can use a predetermined one by someone else that already has your strings, your winds, your brass, your percussion, your electronic synths, all routed appropriately so that you can open up the session, import your video and start writing. But before we can even put a note down on the session, we have to set our markers and tempos to fit the picture because every scene is going to be different. Sometimes it's action, sometimes it's dialogue and everything in between. So there is no one session that will fit every situation. So you have to customize it to that particular scene, that particular moment. So what we do is we go through, we add markers to actually notify exactly when events happen that are notable. It could be a mood change. It could be an instrument change. It could be a different character does a different action, but we're trying to match the music to actually custom fit that scene. Once we've done that and we've chosen tempos that fit as well, we write the music. Once you're done with the music, we export that in a very specific manner. It needs to be a 48 kilohertz wave file not an AIFF, not an MP3, it needs to be a WAV file because that's the highest possible quality and it needs to be at a 24 sample rate and it needs to be set to the frame rate of the video. Videos come in a variety of formats, usually 24 frames per second. Sometimes there's some decimals involved there. Sometimes it's 29 frames, sometimes it's 30. So you gotta make sure that you are matching your music to the appropriate frame rate, otherwise, if you export your music at the wrong frame rate and the film team tries to match your music to their film at a different frame rate, the music will not line up. It'll actually slow it down or speed it up to try to fit with the length of the picture and it actually won't line up. It'll really screw up your music. They will reject it and it's just gonna be a bad story for everyone. So once you're done with the music, you send the cues to the film team for approval and in most cases, they're not going to like the very first draft. Maybe if you've worked with a film team for a while, you can nail it. Um, or if you've been doing this for a long time, you kind of know what to expect. You're going to do a great job on the first time. But in most cases, it usually takes two or three revisions. In extreme cases, maybe up to seven or nine revisions. You know, it just depends on, on how much you're able to communicate up front with the team to make sure that what you're creating is exactly what they're actually looking for and fits the mood and the tone and thematic contour, all that good stuff. So if the team does reject your cue, then you got to revise it until approved. So obviously writing a custom score for a film is a lot of work. And it's a lot of work in a short time frame. So this is something that really does require some coaching. It really does require some training to understand the processes and to understand how to do this quickly. I believe everyone can do it if they take the time to learn what to do. But I think there's a key component here and it's being able to write good music fast that is up to par. That way, when a film team is in contact with you, you can say yes and you can be confident about it.